It's the next level. Yowza. I should have brought my parka. Yeah. Excuse me. Pardon me. Oh, your step. Herb. Dot. <laughs> hey. What's up, Herby? <laughs> hey. My man. <laughs> All good? Good to see yeah. you guys. I can't believe it. Is she really dead this time? Oh, yeah. Now that the handler's gone, what happens at commission? Tell well, we need to elect a new board of directors. But until then, I... Um, I've been voted in as acting chairperson. No shit. Congrats, Irby. That's huge. I'm so goddamn nervous. You'll do fine. Oh, thank you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And you know, Mark, you, you know, I'm impressed, man. You put a bunch of notes in for this one. Like I almost, when I started looking at the agenda and the notes, I was like, man, I almost don't need to put anything in here because Mark's got everything. I didn't think <laughs> but, I covered uh, it that much. <laughs> I watched it a second time and put in my own notes and stuff, but I, man, it's it, this uh, episode 10. Wow. Gosh, we've been saying it all along and I'll continue to say it. This second season was incredible. Oh, definitely. It's, you know, it's rare thing for a show to do better the second season than it did the first season. And the way you know, they so. ended it too, with that little cliffhanger, and we'll get back into that when we talk mm-hmm. about everything. But yeah, that that was a switch to everything if you look at it, and that's what made me like I'm really geared and amped up for season three when yeah. they come back. Yeah. You know, because how are they going to explain all that? But we'll get into that a little later. Yeah, yeah. But that just my initial impression, you know, of the it blew my mind. I think I said that uh, immediately after the very first watch. It just blew my mind. Yeah. So. As you listeners are hearing, yeah, we're going to go into this. We're we're talking about Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 10, which would be entitled The End of Something. So, you know, if you've not listened to us before and you're just coming on, that's what we're talking about. It should have been in the synopsis of the podcast, but regardless. But the synopsis of the actual episode that we're covering, which is The End of Something... You know, the Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 10. They state, Reeling from the events at Dealey Plaza, the siblings head to the farm to help save Harlan and find themselves drawn into a deadly showdown. Nice. Yeah, and that's literally what it was. And there's a lot of things, and you said I put a lot of notes into this episode, but there's a lot of things I left out that I'm, like, recalling right now from that end scene. So... Yeah, we're going to get into that when we do that. So at this point, we're going to go into our top fives. I wonder if it's too late to be unadopted. So you should go first. Absolutely. I uh, I just kind of want to talk about um, alternate timeline versus change timeline. Or, you know, in, in literature and in movies and TVs, there's basically two theories of time travel of how you deal with time travel and that's what like the comic books call it a multiverse which means you have all these alternate universes out there from when timelines got changed and depending on what literature you read science fiction literature you can't travel within your own timeline because if you did then you would create a paradox and what we see in the other type of you know uh, time travel theory is that there's one timeline and if you go forward or back on that timeline you change something, you're going to cause a ripple effect that's going to paradox everything. Yeah, kind of like in Looper, if you think about it. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. Looper, these are these are like Looper, Back to the Future, the Terminator. They kind of use that single timeline theory, whereas then if, when you get to a lot of books and comic books, they use the multiverse theory because that's easier to explain in, in comic books. So as I looked at this as... as 
we got to the end. I'm going to jump right to the end because the end of the, the episode, because whether this is an alternate timeline or whether this is a changed timeline or it's a multiverse or what, I'm not really sure because, you know, it's definitely the 2019 that they jump into at the end of the episode is definitely different from the 2019 that they left, obviously. Mm-hmm. But what I'm wondering is, it's possible that when they jump back to 1963, they jumped into this timeline. The timeline that exists where the world didn't end on April 1st, 2019. So they're on this timeline right now. And the reason I have that as my thought is is because I was spoiled a few weeks ago about the <laughs> fact that if you go if you go back through all these episodes there are hidden sparrows within almost every episode and the only one that I actually caught after I had been spoiled about it was on the invitation that Hargreave sends to the family there's like a sparrow on it where the umbrella would normally be ah. so I'm wondering if this is if we've always been in this alternate, alternate timeline, timeline where you know the only the only thing that takes that theory out is the fact that the way they found Hargreaves was that they looked up the umbrella academy so and of course when I was spoiled about it I didn't know what the sparrows meant I just knew that there were hidden sparrows hmm. now of course at the end of this episode we realize that it was the sparrow academy that has been created that is this alternate universe or timeline or changed or whatever so uh, the, you know season three is going to have a lot of explaining to do <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's that's interesting too because at the very end when he says you you're at uh, this is the umbrella academy and he states no this is the sparrow academy yeah which yeah. to me was uh, my mouth just dropped i was like what <laughs> yeah yeah i agree with you and all that you know with all the time and differences my number five would be well seeing ben's funeral in the very beginning we mm. we get to see why ben is bound to klaus how hargreaves was harsh on them based on ben's death at that point and i guess we got to see klaus start drinking at that point yeah a- and it was a-, a decline of the siblings and that's where vanya's book comes into place so they you know that was her tell all and their connection to one another as a group and i i think this is the start where things really went wrong and you know you know vanya being di- dismissed by diego and luther stepping up to protect hargreaves as he's always done until you know when he comes back from the moon obviously and the scene itself was defining of the characters as we know it and the fact that you know we do find out something about why ben is there to some degree based upon what klaus says yeah and i had i had a little bit of this in my notes just the the title card showing us that it was 2006 when ben died which that that matches up with him being 17 the the problem that i have with that is that they're all supposed to be the same age right yes so but ben died they showed five there with them because mm-hmm. he hadn't started time traveling yet so that would mean he's not 13, he's 17, hmm. right? Because they're they're all born on the same, same day. day. So yeah. I have a little bit of an issue, a little continuity issue with this Umbrella Academy because you kind of messed up. You, you have been talking about Aiden Gallagher's character as being 12 or 13, but yet now you show us that he was around in 2006 when everybody had names. He didn't, he still didn't have a name though. Yeah. So originally... I thought that he had done his time traveling stuff before they got named and before Ben died. Same but now here. they're show- now they're showing us that that's not the case. And so I'm a little I'm a little confused. It's a little bit of a continuity issue that I have and it didn't even occur to me until you just started talking about it that I realized that <laughs> wait a minute. Because this is this is a question that we've had, right? Cuz Ben always looked like he was older. Correct. In we, we we so we knew that he didn't die in the flashback that we saw. Uh, in fact, yeah, that's this doesn't this. Do, oh man, now I'm having a bigger issue with this. I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch it or something. Well, because we need to write Netflix, be, I guess. Because <laughs> definitely, because there's definitely when they show us in the first season when five leaves to time travel. Yeah, Ben is. They are thirteen, and Ben is there, and Ben is thirteen. Correct. So how could five be there in 2006? When, oh, this is now going to bug me until <laughs> I figure this out because this is a huge continuity hole that the show has opened up. Yeah. For me. Five should not have been around for Ben's funeral. Hmm. Hmm. 
That is true. Because is... it sounded like to me like he was gone before, like you right. were saying. That's, and if you go back to season one, I'm pretty sure they were like 12, 13 years old when Ben gets zapped into the future. And that's been the whole date that we've been working with was mm-hmm. the fact that he was like 13, that they were all 13 when he left. So this is, and I, I'm really surprised. We'll have to see. I did not listen to TV podcast industries coverage of the Umbrella Academy yet. Cause I didn't want to get spoiled for things. I wonder if this comes up in anybody else's podcast. I would like I mean, to hear it as well. I'm wondering yeah, if when Rima we, and Pake did that on strange. I wonder indeed. If, yeah, I wonder if they're going to pick up on it or not. So we'll, I guess we'll find out when they release their final episode podcast next week. Yeah. Interesting that you bring that up. Now you've created a quandary for me. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, what were their patches on on their uniform? Were they Umbrella or were they Sparrow? In We didn't see the uniforms. You're talking about in this season? Yeah. At the end? I'm talking at during a funeral. Ooh, interesting. But no, that still doesn't make, no, they had to be Umbrella. They had to be Umbrella because, I know. because Ben is alive. Because at the end of the episode, Ben is alive in 2019. But isn't there a different person there at the very end of that Right, NC no, Ben was no, there. No, Ben. Yeah, Ben is there. Ben oh, okay. is alive. All right, perfect. At the, at yeah. the end, at, and when they jump into the alternate timeline or the change timeline, whatever it is, Ben is alive. Because remember, that's the first thing. Uh, it's either Klaus or Diego. I can't remember what one of them says is they go, why is Ben's portrait above the fireplace? And then Ben comes around the corner and, and he's like, who are you guys? Who, who the hell are you? Because he doesn't know any of them. And so I'm wondering if the team we saw standing up on the balcony, if it's going to be alternate versions of the same characters we have, or if it's going to be all new, you know, characters. six all new characters. From the silhouettes, it kind of looked like they were the same, but then that wouldn't, that doesn't make sense either because then Ben would have recognized them, even alternate versions of them, you would think. So, yeah. So, yeah. Season three has got some explaining to do. Um, <laughs> and uh, this may come up as a topic of conversation this evening if we're on a Zoom call. Yeah, definitely. We'll see, we'll I think see. we should bring that up as fun when we do our game night. <laughs> this is going to be fun. As far as you listeners are concerned, we are a group and we just – we're a bunch of podcasters just love to get together and have game nights every Saturday night. So, so we got people from Strange Indeed, Podcastica, everything. So yeah. we, we yeah. like to have fun. So we're probably going to bring this up as we're playing games just for fun. Yeah. yeah. So this brings me, brings us to my number four, uh, which we've, we, which I, I think we've got some more notes about this as well, but I just love that whole scene with the, the, where we get the whole family when the TV is talking about it and they talk about Vanya. They know Vanya's name. They know Diego's name. They know, they know Allison, they know Klaus and the unidentified boy, mm. all that. And I love how, even though at at first, they all say, no, we're not going to go with you to the farm. Vanya, you got to go by yourself. They all end up getting it. It was so touching. It really was yeah. really great that they all got together because they recognized that we're better together than apart. And we now have Vanya is now equally one of us. She's got control of her powers. She or seemingly got control of her powers. We've talked her, you know, Ben's talked her off the ledge. Mm-hmm. And now she's part of the family. Yep. And they are all together. And I'm so it's so happy. This is what we've been working two seasons towards. We've been working two seasons to reunite this family together as one team. And we finally get that. And uh, and then, of course, the very end of the episode's got to throw a monkey wrench into it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think they were always a family and always a dysfunctional family. I think Oh yeah. what oh, it yeah. boiled down to is that they accepted Vanya as part of the team at this point because she's gotten over that explosive, mm-hmm. you know, feeling yeah. of destroying yeah. everything because not, you know, for the most part, she was left out with during everything with her powers and everything else. Mm-hmm. But now she is a crucial part of that team. Right. So that, that, yeah, I enjoy that aspect and I love that. It was so touching to see all that. And we'll go into that once we get into my other notes and our quotes. My number four would be Vanya telling Klaus about Ben, what he whispered in her ear about Klaus. Mm-hmm. And he was too, uh, you know, basically Ben was too scared to go into the light. And, yeah. and it wasn't Klaus that made him stay. He uh, might have been words and just him being comforted at that point. And that's why Ben wanted to stay. Then all the other sim- you know, siblings come along to help Vanya. And like you said, it was a family thing, a team mm-hmm. thing. 
then Luther gets in the back and makes that statement when he has end of the car drops and it's like if somebody makes a fat joke I'm out of here and I thought that was really funny and touching all at the same time just all of them together we're in this together Attitude. Yeah, I loved I loved the, the fact that that Klaus knew that Ben had left a parting message for him because he specifically asks Vanya, did he did he leave any message for me? Did he say anything for you to tell me? Which I thought that was really cool because he realized that 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 he thought or he you know he knew that Ben was going to have some sort of message for him. And so I just love that that the message is that it wasn't Klaus's fault because Klaus has been like you said, he's been blaming himself. All this for, time, yeah. yeah, been just hanging around, and uh, that's that's an interesting that that gives us that gives us a little bit of what we've been seeing throughout the season of Klaus ignoring him, Klaus not telling the others that he was there, it, because it was a shame thing for Klaus that he thought he was the reason Ben was staying. So yeah, and Ben had never had told him that, and yeah, just kept going on and on and on, and their travels through time. <laughs> my number three is uh it just a, it's a little bit of selective memory on sissy's part and you know maybe it's a, a little thing but it just seemed kind of strange to me that she tell she says to vanya that she's scared one of the reasons she's scared is because harlan killed carl by tossing him aside just like vanya did with the police but that's not exactly what happened carl moved the gun which was in sissy's hands which was pointed at harlan at one at several points in that discussion mm -hmm. when he was in the car when he gets out of the car carl moves the gun causes sissy to pull the trigger and then the bullet stops you know harlan uses that power to stop the bullet and redirects it at carl mm -hmm. and so or it got deflected into carl maybe harlan didn't do it on purpose maybe he did do it on purpose we'll probably never really know for sure uh, the answer to that question, but that, you know, maybe we will, because we did get that little cliffhanger there at the end when he's in the car and you can see that he still has a little bit of telekinesis because he's making that little uh, Hawaiian thing float hmm. in his hand. So he still has some of the telekinesis that, uh, that he got from Vanya. And so I wonder if that's going to play into season three, because you realize from 1963 to 2019, what is that? 36, 46 years. So Harlan would still be, you know, a middle-aged man mm -hmm. at that point. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to see if we're going to see an older Harlan in season three. I'd be, uh, that'd be interesting. That would... And also maybe that would tie into the idea of the Sparrow Academy and where Hargreaves maybe finds out these things about him. And that's why he creates it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. These, these are speculations and yeah, these yeah. are thoughts just blurting out there, but. Yeah, I, I think if the writers were really keen on it, they would definitely bring Harlan back. And mm -hmm. it m could be the uh, reason why Hargreaves, as well as him already knowing that he has snatched these kids up within that time and that year when they were born, to bring yeah. them together. Well, remember... Luther basically told him everything. Oh yeah, yeah, he did. You know, and so he knows what's what's coming. He knows the future. Yeah, he so. knows the future at this point, and that's the worst yeah. thing he could ever do. Emmett Brown said it to Marty, saying a uh, person really should mm -hmm. know their future. You know, and well, according to Emmett Brown, it's in his case he uh, he died <laughs> in that future. He figured what the hell? He figured what the hell though. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure that Hargreaves at this point, and I think that's probably the reason why Hargreaves created i guess spe we're speculating still i'm yeah still we don't know let's let's just move on let's let's, let's move on to your number three because this is all just up in the air stuff yeah we, we could go cross-eyed just talking about this <laughs> yeah yeah well my number three would be the siblings coming together during the fight mm -hmm. you know diego deflected the bullets as five fled to the house i don't think we ever saw that before you know and then vanya bombed all of the commission's people as they approached that was one big telekinetic yeah. bomb right there right and the connection and understanding of diego within that scene with five five was out of power because he was way too tired so it's a sibling just helping out another as well as mm -hmm. you know a teammate at that point and it was really nice to see where five being weak at that point you know, we, all mm -hmm. this time we always seen him headstrong and always using his power, but we never really saw him truly weak. Yeah. Yeah. And then we see Lila with power 
attacking them. You know, Klaus's uh, use of the dead to catch Diego at that point. No, they caught Klaus. They didn't catch Diego. Diego got trapped under the tractor. Oh, remember? okay. I got they, it backwards. He, they caught, <laughs> yeah, they caught Klaus. They caught Klaus himself, yeah. And I guess uh, Lila was born all along at the same time as the mm-hmm. other siblings. And the handler's way of manipulation plus, you know... She is really strong. Well, and that plays right into what my number two is, is just the fact that we find out that Lila, we've been we've been speculating it all season. We've been wondering about it, whether yep. we knew her age fit the time frame. Yeah, we, we discussed this before. Yeah, a few times. And it wasn't until here we get the reveal that her power is that she absorbs other soups' powers. So that's why after uh, Vanya attacked the whole, all the commission people. That's why the hand, they're in that that kind of protective bubble that uh, that she has created. Her and the handler are in this protective bubble, and then she floats up in there and she uses the same power to affect Vanya. Mm-hmm. When she fights Luther, she's doing the same thing. She's absorbing his strength and turning his strength against him. She uses the rumor power against Allison, Allison. Yep. and almost kills Allison mm-hmm. because Luther has to come in and get get the spell broken on Allison. We see her fighting five. Really the only, the only power we don't see her absorb is Diego's. And the only time we saw Diego do that, and people said this at the, after the first episode, but I always wondered why they thought he did that. But we saw him do that in the first episode when those guys were shooting at him, he waved his hands or he did something and he caused all those bullets to go back. And I always try, I tried to figure out, like I thought, did he dodge, you know, were they all in a circle? And so they basically all shot each other because he was able to dodge all the bullets. But no, here we find out that their powers are evolving or something's happening with their powers because suddenly he's able to do this. Now, the only, again, and this is another one, it's probably just a little thing because maybe Diego just manifested it or something because he didn't know he could do that. Or did he know he could do that? Hmm. Stop the bullets. I don't know. But I did think that was that was pretty cool that we see all of them all of their powers kind of get a little bit tweaked and we see what we saw in the first episode of them using their powers differently than we've seen them use, uh, use them before. So yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And to tag onto that, that would be my number two, which would be Lila's powers, but Mm. it's as if she has an ability to mimic all of their powers or as you said, absorb very similar to certain things we've seen in comics before, which would be, rogue who used to touch people and get their powers one at a time Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mimic in the x-men comics as well yeah he would be able to do the same thing she can mimic their abilities with uh, within their vicinity apparently so she doesn't even have to touch them or be near Mm -hmm. them too too close to them then use it against them you know luther's ability of power vanya's ability of uh, you know telekinesis allison's rumor as you said as well as five's powers of pushing time did we ever see Klaus's power? That's the one question. No, that's another one we didn't see her use. So I guess there was two really that she didn't uh, get the chance to absorb. She didn't absorb Diego's, or we don't know if she did. And we didn't see her use Klaus's or Diego's powers. So uh, those are the only two we didn't see. And I part of that, I wonder, is if the power has to be actively used against her. Because that's really, even with, with Allison, it was Allison started to say... I heard a rumor, and then as soon as she said that, that was able to get Lila to absorb it and then use it back on her. The same with with Five, when she's in that room with him and he starts teleporting, then suddenly she's able to teleport. Yeah. So, I, and, and the other thing we don't know, and they kind of hinted at this, was somebody, one of the siblings said, well, she can only have one at a time. And I think it was Vanya who said, how do you know that? You don't know that for sure. Because I know in the TV show Heroes, there was, a, there was one of the heroes that could do that. He thought he only got the powers one at a time. But then you found out later that no, as any power that he'd absorbed, he could just recall it. Uh, was that Peter it Petrelli? It was Peter's brother. It was the other one. The oh. one could fly. The, the politician could fly, and it was his brother. The I think I don't remember what their names were, but yeah, it was one of the Petrelli brothers. One of those. One of the Petrelli brothers, okay. because the the one brother who was the politician, he could fly, and then the other one absorbed that power from him. And then later in one of the later seasons, he's when he's with I think it's Eccleston's character. Eccleston's character tells him, no, any power that you've absorbed, you can just recall it. 
and use it whenever you want. And so he has to test it and finds out that, yes, he can wow. do all these things. So if I remember correctly, you know, if any viewers remember Heroes and I'm wrong, I think I'm right, though. I have all three seasons on Blu-ray, so i got to go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> I've got them. I think I've got them somewhere. But Yeah, but, yeah, it's a no wonder, though, that the handler actually wanted her for her own. Oh, absolutely. I think abs- I, I think that's what we see here at the end, especially when the handler, after the handler is killed, you know, and then or, or before she's she's killed, when we see her willingness to kill Lila, she you know, she shoots down Lila because she says, well, I don't need you anymore. I'm going to go get Harlan. Yeah. And that's been her whole thing has been. And I'm sure I'm I'm totally convinced that she knew that Lila was one of these children. And so she orchestrated the whole thing to kill her parents so that she could sweep in. And that's basically what how five can or Diego convinces Lila because he no five does five convinces Lila of this because he says, why would the handler have been there? She never goes on field assignments when she orders a kill. So why would a kill be ordered and have a management, have management right there after the kill to come get you unless she had planned it that way. And that's how he convinces Lila to turn on the handler. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, we have talked about everything that I have in my numbers and in my notes. So okay. uh, uh, just go to your number one, maybe, and we'll see where we go from there. Sure. My number one, which would be the return of the Swede. Mm. And he kills the handler. But then we see how it all ends. Uh, you know, at the very end, basically all of Hardgreave's words work on Five to change things. He starts on seconds, minutes, and moments. Five goes back and changes everything, but still the handler meets her end. And, you know, after all said and done, Vanya is able to help Harlan and take back the power he had. Herb shows up with La Resistance. <laughs> <laughs> and they fix the issues within the farm. The commission needs to elect Herb as acting chairperson at that point. And Vanya having to leave Sissy and Harlan at that point. They they can't have a quote unquote normal life, but you know, Vanya. Yeah, cares. that was so sad. That was so sad because that's you know, Sissy's point was Vanya says, Well, I can protect you or something like that. And Sissy says, Yeah, but people like this are gonna keep coming. All the time. Is this never going to happen again? And Vanya can't, she can't tell her that. No, yeah. she can't say no, this is never going to happen again. And so that's basically what Sissy is saying is I can't, I can't go with you because then we're going to constantly be in danger. Even though you're the person that I love, you're the person that could protect me. We're going to constantly be in danger and I'm not willing to be constantly in danger. So, yeah. So now we got basically a sense of closure within the season, I guess between the first two, but mm-hmm. wrapping up a lot. Yeah, that is what was needed within. But we lost Ben. Vanya lost Sissy and Harlan. And Diego and Lila are together as a family with the others. No, Lila zapped out. Lila took the the handler's briefcase and leaves. Oh, I must have. Wow. Yeah, even yeah, several... I, I I caught that that because uh, I was trying to figure that out too. Where was Lila at when they go to the Sparrow Academy? Lila's not with them. Yeah, because she zaps out after. So the whole the whole scene in the barn there when Five goes back in time and manages to convince the Swede not to kill, not to shoot at them. Yes, he the the Swede still kills the handler, which that's fine. I'm cool. I'm cool with him killing the handler. But the what what five was going back to change was the Swede killing everybody else. Because remember, the Swede kills the handler, and then he keeps shooting, and he kills all of them basically. Yes, and then he kills five goes he, back in time. Yeah, and he and that's when after right after the Swede kills the handler. Five manages to convince him to stop the killing. That let's just stop. There's there we don't need to do this anymore. Okay. It's over. You've gotten your revenge. You don't we don't need to do and that's when the Swede drops his gun and leaves. And as he's leaving, so part of me is wondering is because five went back in time, we didn't get as much of Diego and Lila together. So all Lila sees is that this woman who she's thought of as her mother is dead. And remember, in this reality, the reality that Five has just created, the handler didn't kill Lila. You see what I'm saying? True. So so Lila takes the briefcase and she zaps out. And even though they're all trying to convince her to stay with them, you're one of you're one of us, you're part of our family, but she hasn't had that bonding moment that she had before Five changed the timeline, I think. Hmm. So I think that's why Lila zaps out 
with the briefcase. And then I just love that, that scene at the end when, uh, like you said, Herb, Herb comes back and he's talking about how he's running the commission now. And, uh, and five says, well, when we get one favor, can you give us a briefcase? And he goes, take your pick, pick. <laughs> you know, yeah. because all of these agents are dead, but all of their briefcases are here. So I thought that was, I thought that was a great little thing. And, you know, Allison gets her closure with, with Ray. She leaves in that letter in the book. Yep. And just very touching, which is sad for Ray, but at the same time, he had already said in the previous episode, he said he would never, he would, he doesn't regret the year he spent with her. He would rather have the memory of that than to have her take it away. Exactly. You know? But he can't go with her to the future either. So, and to, to talk a little bit more about that whole battle too, because you had all those agents out there. Mm -hmm. Did you notice all the weird, like, masks and everything yeah that people some had. of them had yeah some of them had masks on some of them were different yeah it was it was a it was the entire commission so i this is another going to be an interesting thing for season three if if this happens and this kind of goes back into what i started talking about at the very beginning is the commission never discussed alternate timelines nope. they never discussed multiverses they only discussed one timeline so that's why i kind of lean toward that this show isn't doing the multiverse thing that they're doing, but you know, that may be in season three. I don't know, but it, you know, the commission's now been completely wiped out. They're going to have to start over again. Correct. I mean, yeah. this is even worse than when five blew up the briefcase room. They have no personnel. I mean, I'm cause the handler said at the beginning of the episode, she said, recall everybody or the end of the last episode, whenever it was, mm -hmm. she said, recall everybody from the field five and Luther and Diego say, well, it's, you know, six against two or six against yeah, six against two, we've got the numbers, and that's when all the agents start popping in, and you're like, oh, great. So now, so, yeah, this is all a great, great setup for season three. All right, cool. I see, and you already spoke about your one note, but if you want to steal from mine, go ahead. Well, you've got a lot. Go ahead. You start. Where do you want to start at? Well, I'll start with the first one that I have, and that would be the siblings. You know, they, that whole very beginning when you see the siblings mm -hmm. are all together being part of, you know, being <laughs> addressed as being part of Kennedy's assassination. You know, Vanya wanted in the deaths of several federal investigators inside the federal building at Dealey Plaza. You know, they, they state this, <laughs> this is verbatim. So a Cuban exile known only as Diego, who recently escaped from Holbrook Sanitarium. That was that was great, too. When they said Cuban, Diego went Cuban. Cuban? Like, like, <laughs> like, he's yeah. not, like we, we still, we discussed this when they went to the Mexican embassy. What, we don't know what, we don't know what Diego is. Exactly. So. <laughs> uh, they continue on saying, a bare knuckle boxer with suspected mafia ties who fights under the alias King Kong. <laughs> and the look on Luther's face, like, what? Yeah. And then Allison Chestnut, uh, a Negro radical responsible for instigating and organizing the recent riots at Statler's lunch counter. And she takes issue with that because that's not totally true either. Exactly. <laughs> and then Klaus, the controversial cult leader and known tax evader. <laughs> then they show the picture of Five as an unidentified boy who's being held hostage by the terrorist network. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and all the all the rest of the stuff you got here, uh, we discussed a little bit. We've already talked yeah. about Vanya and her connection with Harlan. I did love it. I have the quote in my quotes uh, here. You 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 mentioned about Diego talking about the 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 commission and how it was going to crap, and Five yeah. didn't even know all this. Um, and I, I just love that that this whole thing is this whole confrontation we have between these four. We have Lila, the handler, Five, and Diego because they've all been part of that system for at least a, a little bit, you know? And so they all kind of know pieces, but they don't know the whole thing. Yes. So I, I think that's, we pretty much topped on all our um, notes at yeah, this point. Um, the only thing that we didn't talk about was uh, with Diego trying to incorporate Lila into the family. Yeah. And I, I have to go back and like I said, I have to, to rewatch that end scene to, to, re to find out how much he was able to say to her before the handler was killed and how much of it happened after the the handler was killed because you know 
five going back in time may have changed Lila's view on things. Kind of like when you when you watch spoilers for always seen Avengers Endgame. Yeah, you know the the Gamora that meets Star Lord is not the Gamora that fell in love with him. Exactly, they're in Endgame, and so he's going to have to re- try to rekindle that romance. So yeah, kind of like I'm wondering if the same kind of thing that we're going to have with Lila is that that this Lila Diego connection has kind of been tough. So. Yeah, but the love is always there for Lila anyway before that incident. So Yeah, so we'll 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 have to see in the next season how if if Lila comes into play even so. Yeah, definitely. No. So we've sh- got some yeah, we got some quotes here? Yeah. Okay. Uh I will start with my first one which was Klaus saying, "Trust me, Ben Arino. I'm an expert about the dead. Want to watch me piss in dad's <laughs> gas tank?" And that was after the funeral. And Klaus sees Ben, and Ben states he wanted to go to the light, and Klaus tells him that he can go at any time. Yeah, uh, and then the one of the the first one I have is just when Diego does talk about the fact that he saw the instant infinite switchboard, and he says, "Hell yeah, I made that machine my bitch." Y'all need to recognize. <laughs> it was like uh, I don't think that's exactly that's more of that selective memory thing. I think it was more Herb showing you how, what was on there. But I thought that was great that he was really trying to just show how how much he had figured out uh, from the commission, how smart he was trying to to, to show his smarts and his that he's smart too and he's helpful yeah. <laughs> yeah my last one would be luther saying love shouldn't have to hurt this much and that was when lila stated that the hand lo- loved her you know yeah and i love we talked about the scene when all the siblings are getting in the car and you know when five gets in the car uh vanya just kind of shoots him a look like what are you doing and he says i know you owe me one sis children right in the back and he puts allison and klaus and the rest of them all in the back of the car he's gonna ride in front i thought that was great yeah so we've got some feedback here from our good friend daphne Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you could... want me to go ahead and read yeah. this one, and then you do the audio? Or you want to do the audio one first? We'll do Daphne's uh, feedback. Okay. And you can read that. This is what uh, Daphne says. She says, "Hi, Mark and Steve. I'm sending uh, my final feedback for the Umbrella Academy season two. I can't believe the season is over, and what a season it was. I loved the intra-family conversations in the episode. They reminded me that even though the siblings." have been all over the place this season. They're still a family, although still dysfunctional as conflicted as I have been about the handler. I hope she is finally gone. I think her debauchery has been fun to watch, but it's time for the torch to be passed to someone else. Glad the Swede is going to be finding peace with Klaus's flock. I for- Oh yeah. We didn't even mention that, that the Swede joins the, the bus, the bus trip of uh, Klaus's people. I hope there's a season three because the setup for Umbrella versus Sparrow looks to be intense and dynamic. Thanks for your great insights over the past 10 weeks. It's been fun going week to week with your episodes, and I'm already looking forward to hopefully next season. And thank you, Daphne. I know that's something that even Paik and Rima mentioned on Strange Indeed, that they appreciate those those who are able to stay week to week and and be strong and not not race ahead and binge binge watch and Daphne is one of those ones that even we when we talked to her after I had watched an episode or after you and I had podcasted over an episode Daphne would still say well I'm not going to watch it until after I listen to Pake and Rima talk about the previous one and so it was it was really good so yeah thank you so much Daphne and we are looking forward to season three and now we're going to actually go into Lara's feedback she sent some audio feedback and we're going to listen to that well hi there Mark and Steve this is Lara I thought I'd call and leave my overall impressions for season two of the Umbrella Academy I've been following your podcast coverage and I would have to just let you know that this season was far and away better than last season last season was okay it was entertaining it just didn't draw me in but this year was just incredible The characters had far more depth and were way more interesting, especially the ones that I really didn't care for that much in the first season, like Luther and Allison and, um, yeah, and even, you know, oh, and Ben, we got to see more of. I just thought uh, they put a lot more work into developing the characters and also the character interactions between the siblings. You actually felt that they were siblings this year instead of just a bunch of, uh, random people thrown together through coincidence. So that was great. Um, The storyline was really solid this year. They had a a really clean through line 
every single episode was interesting. I never got bored through the entire season, and snappy dialogue and humor just helped enhance all of that. Uh, it was a really great season, and I'm really excited after the season finale to see where this is going to go next season. And I'm really glad that we're not losing Ben necessarily. It's not the same Ben. It's not that same sweet boy who has been living as a ghost for the past 17 years, but uh, looks like a little bit edgier, tougher, uh, meaner Ben. We'll see. So yeah, that's about it for my feedback. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And as to your question about who named the yeah. siblings, mm -hmm. it was Robot Grace. She named them. I think they pointed out in the first season that she named them. She gave them all names according to their countries of origin. So uh, Vanya, who was born to the Russian swimmer in the very first episode of season one, is given a Russian name. <laughs> so just thought I'd drop that on you. And uh, have a good podcast, guys. Bye. Well, thank you, Lara, for sending that in. Thank you so much, Lara. Yes, and I, I think we talked a little bit about this. And I think it's in that's in the comic. I don't think that was in the show at all. I, Actually, I it was. They did mention it in season one. The, yeah, you're going to have to go back and show that to me because I do not I remember. remember Diego saying something that mom gave us our names. Mm. At well, one then, that, then that makes it even more confusing why five. Yeah, that, that, that makes that whole continuity. A whole little bit of, of crazy. Five, yeah, yeah. five being there in 2006 doesn't make any, any sense. So uh, <laughs> unless, I mean, five was there, right? Yeah, he was there. He was there in the too. funeral season. Yeah, in the funeral. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Still, it makes for a huge, huge hole. In, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Big difference, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, like I said, it didn't even occur to me until you started talking about it, until I started putting it together and going, wait a minute, 2006, that shouldn't have been, yeah, so now it's just going to bug me. And I'll be interested, like like you said, I'll be interested to go back when I go back and listen to TV Podcast Industries and when I listen to Pake and Rima talk about this episode, if they bring it up or not. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So I don't have anything really for comic news. I didn't get much research in this week. Sorry, I've been working like crazy, everybody. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's out there, and we'll post it on our Facebook page when it comes as it, you know, as it comes in. So keep track with that. So what we'll move on to now is our podcast recommendations. So Steve, what's yours? Absolutely. My, so I want to recommend House Podcastica. If you guys haven't already been following House Podcastica, they will be covering The Mandalorian when it returns at the end of this month. That'll be a week-to-week -week podcast with Jason, Rima, and Richard. I'm assuming Richard will be back with them. Uh, also, uh, Jason and Rima over on Strange Indeed, they're actually doing separate feeds for their Umbrella Academy and their Great British Bake Off. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. I mean, it's, it's both. It's still Strange Indeed, but it's two separate podcasts. So huh. uh, it's Pake and Rima are, are doing Umbrella Academy and they will be starting Haunting of Bly Manor when it comes in, when it starts here in a couple of weeks. Yep. So I'll be sending them voicemails about the Haunting of Bly Manor. Same and here. And then Jason and Rima are doing the Great British Baking Show or Bake Off or whatever it is on Netflix. Yep. And I send them voicemails as well. So all right, check those two out. Yep. Check those two out. The only one that I have left, that would be Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. Yep. That's my other podcast, so I'm going to highly recommend that. This is my other podcast that I, I just released last week, so it just started. So our first episode, we covered Die Hard from 1988, and that was with Ben Beck. As you know, he's on the Next Level Podcast Network as well, so he can be found on the Lost We Have to Go Back and the Celebrity Spotlight on the Next Level Podcast Network. And to give you a little bit more information on what's going on with Adrenaline Cinema, the podcast will have rotating co-hosts. So basically, Ben will be the first. The next one up will be Rima that you hear on Strange Indeed. And the third one, I'm still working on. But keep in mind, the next episode will be about Top Gun. So if you want to send any feedback about the movie Top Gun, and I know Steve has already because I already got the voicemail, <laughs> uh, that will be played on the actual podcast. And if you have any thoughts, please send them to our Facebook page, which would be Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on Facebook. Or you could just email us at Podcast at gmail.com. And right now we could currently be heard on Spotify and TuneIn. I'm still working on 
Google Podcasts, as well as Apple Podcasts, and everything that's affiliated with that. So we'll be on a multiple amount of apps that you could hear us on that do podcasts. All right. And to submit feedback to this podcast, Panels to Pixels, obviously you're listening to us on whatever podcast player of choice you choose to download and listen to it. We're on most of them out there, so check us out. But uh, you can also go to our website. We have a website called Panels to Pixels Podcast.com. We have a Facebook page, which is just Facebook.com slash Panels to Pixels. We also have an email address that you can email us at. Email, email us a voicemail or email us just a straight up email at Panels to Pixels one at gmail.com. That's Panels to Pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle. The number one at gmail.com. You can also call us and leave a voicemail at 845 350 Two zero nine five. We're also on YouTube as Panels to Pixels Podcast. So check us out there. Give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. And you will hear a new episode just after this being posted. And we will be covering The Walking Dead Season 10, Episode 16. And with a couple of special guests. So it'll be a round table. So seek that within the next two days when it comes out. And then we next week we will be going on and moving into the world of Amazon's The Boys Season 2. So if you have watched ahead, please send us feedback with particular episodes that you've watched and have your thoughts on. And we will read them or play your audio feedback from that. We will be doing two episodes every week so far. We might run it down to one depending after the first two, but we'll make that decision and we'll let you guys know ahead of time. So if you have anything particular that you want to talk about, please leave them in the notes and that we could be found in our Facebook page. And just to let you know, also listeners, both Mark and I have watched or will be watching the entire season two of the boys. So we'll be coming at this podcast as a spoiler full podcast of the entire season of the boys, because by the time you hear this, by the time we record it, it will be the finale of The Boys will be finished. So Exactly, because they started it off with the first three episodes, and then it was episode per week, and we were in the middle of doing Umbrella Academy. But I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are listening to other podcasts about that show as well, and I'm glad you are. And if you could follow us on that journey that would be amazing so where else can listeners hear us well i am i love watching tv and i leave voicemails for all sorts of various podcasts uh, in particular so you my voice can pop up on just about any podcast you might think i uh, i do love it and i can't wait to talk about the walking dead uh, i can't wait for the boys and all the the future things that we have going but yeah you'll hear me pop up but i will always be here uh, for our faithful panelers on Panels to Pixels. Exactly. And I can be found here as well on Panels to Pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that I love that my friends do. And you can also hear me as well, like I mentioned before, on Adrenaline Cinema, and that can be found on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. You know, like I stated, the podcast will be about those action and adventure suspense films that we love that get our adrenaline going. So I've gotten a plethora of... <laughs> movies to cover at this point i think the the number is ranged over 50 at this point you will definitely hear steve on that podcast as well and he's probably going to be on multiple just like ben will be as well and as well as our friends Anwen and rima and probably paik and daphne as well so check it out on pirate core entertainment's website which would be pirate core and of course spelled out c-o-r-p-s entertainment.com so that's pretty much our show this evening. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.